J Route22.com here with the cheap wine reviews. I think it's episode 19. It's like 40 degrees where I'm filming, so I'm gonna put this oversized down jacket on like Mr. F and Rogers. Okay. So today's gonna be sort of a, a like a bittersweet kind of uh, day uh, for this video. This is the uh, season finale. Uh, we're going on a hiatus here for the Cheap Wine Reviews vlog. 19 uh, episodes in. Um, let me give you a little uh, explanation why. First, before we taste this last bottle of El Cheapo wine. Um, and by the way, it's an Italian wine we got at uh, uh, Wegmans for six bucks. I, it's probably gonna taste like crap. I'm not a big fan of Italian wine. But anyway, without losing track here, I've been drinking uh, red wine prolifically uh, for the past, God knows, I don't know, for five to seven to eight years, maybe. My guess is uh, the equivalent of maybe between three and four hundred bottles this size in at least uh, a year. And it was great. It's a good buzz. It's my favorite buzz. It's uh, it's always been my, my preferred alcohol, you know, over beer. Beer gives you a happy buzz, but then you get bloated and you're gassy and some people can't burp like me and it's just problems and it's too much uh, sugar and your blood, whatever. And then booze, you know, like, like a vodka or a tequila or something like that, they're very good for your health, quote unquote. But it's not a happy buzz. It's, it really isn't. Uh, so wine was, the, was perfect. But however, in the last uh, six to 12 months or so, I've noticed liver pain. Like it's uncomfortable. And I'm not sure exactly why, whether it's just I'm drinking too much or is it uh, some sort of pesticides in the cheap wines that we drink or is it sulfites, I don't know, some, something made my, something in my internal organs unhappy. And before I'm, I'm like carted off uh, and put underground, six feet under, I, I just said, let me try something else. So I've been experimenting with these, these cheap, these, uh, these seltzers. I did a review uh, about seltzers. I think I did a review about these truly wines to these truly seltzers, which uh, we don't really like. Um, the, the, I said that it kind of made you feel like it was soul sucking. Um, but I would drink them, you know, what, like, I wouldn't really water them down. And these truly, I'm not a big fan of them. They're very popular. I think they're the most popular ones. Um, they're, not, they're not very good. I only bought it because uh, I sort of uh, had to to get this case discount. But anyway, for the last five weeks, I've only drank wine four times and each time I drank even one and a half to two so I think I had three bottles once I, I was I had a crazy night but the four times in the last five weeks I drank red wine I didn't feel good the next day it wasn't a hangover it, the hangover part was 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 okay most of the time maybe once I had a hangover where I couldn't manage it too well but there was something going on. Like my liver was talking to me. You gotta listen to your body. And I decided to switch to these Smirnoff um, spiked sparkling seltzers because number one, I water them down. This is a mason jar. This is something else that you're gonna find out about these sparkling seltzers that is fantastic. With red wine, you don't really want to, other than watering it down, you don't want to like adulterate the, the wine, like add anything to it. Maybe a sparkling like a seltzer, <laughs> like a plain sparkling water, like a Perrier or something, give it that uh, spritzer uh, uh, effect. But with the sparkling seltzers, these uh, malted beverages, I stick, I, I pour a capsule of ginger inside, I put lemon juice in, and I, and I make it like into, like, it's actually medicinal at that point. The ginger is great, it, it's great for, for overall health, but. And one of the, the benefits of drinking these seltzers 
Like I don't drink them out of the can. Well, most people will drink them out of a can like a beer, which is fine. You can't water a beer down, it'll taste raw. But these spiked sparkling seltzers, or whatever you want to call them, spiked and sparkling, they all have a different name, but they're all spiked. Spiked is in the title of every one. You can like 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 become a like a like a like a mixologist and, and add things to it like I did with the with the ginger and the lemon and I, sometimes I put hyaluronic acid in it, it helps your joints. I mean you could make little medicinal drinks and by watering it down, these are 12 ounce cans, this is a 32 ounce uh, mason jar. You throttle your alcohol consumption way better than wine because wine you can only dilute it so much. I, I've mentioned in previous videos where there were some wines, I think one of the most recent wines I drank, um, I could water it down almost three to one and it maintained its, its deep dark red color and had really good taste and so on. Even though it was a lower alcohol percentage, it was 13 point something percent, it held up well being diluted. Now there's something like this. I was going to end the, the wine uh, series or wine season because I may start drinking wine again maybe in the summer of 2019. But uh, this Saddlebred Cellars, uh, if you look, uh, just search for Saddlebred Cellars on either YouTube or our website njroot22.com and you'll see that this was absolutely my favorite straight up wine to drink like with no dilution just in a in a glass and i was going to open this up tonight to to to, to sign off this the cheap wine series but i'm going to save it i'm going to save it for if i go out to eat somewhere if i just want to have a, a a nice dinner with, with just a glass or two of wine this is my favorite 12 percent um straight up drinking wine. It, it really had the best flavor for us. You know, that's everybody's different. So, with that being said, uh, even though I'm probably like four cans of uh, spiked seltzer in, I'm going to do like a cardinal sin here. I'm going to mix my seltzer beverage and I'm going to finish this. Let's just say the final review in this series is going to be the Bartenura. It's an Italian red wine out of uh, Italy, of course, and it says it's uh, medium intensity, red color, violet shades, fruity berry notes, uh, lingering bouquet. <laughs> That's why uh, my significant other said she doesn't uh, like Italian wines because of the flowery effects. I might not like it either, but I'm going to open this bad boy up and have a sip, a regular sip in the glass, and then I'm going to pour, if, if I don't completely hate it, I'm going to make a final drink. Here and I'll just give the rest of this bottle away to someone who wants it in my house. I mean, I'm not, this isn't a giveaway. It's not an online giveaway. So I'm going to open up this crappy Italian six-dollar bottle of wine from Whiteman's. I mean, they apparently curate their wines, but I, I, I bet you it's a, there's a financial decision involved in it to profit for the company. I mean, they wouldn't sell these things for six bucks unless they got them for like a dollar. And my guess is. I've seen some of the profit margins, some of these uh, wine guys. It smells like wine. It smells like a wine barrel. It doesn't look all that great. It has a brown tinge to it. But I'm going to taste it in this thing, just the way they, those stupid people. Like everybody copies everybody else. I mean, why can't I just drink it out of the bottle? Why does it have to be in a glass? No, it opens up and this and that. I, I watched a movie, by the way. I'm going to do a review about this movie. It was called... Um, blood into wine or something like that. It was a, a documentary. It was sort of a funny documentary with the lead singer of Tool, that like metal, that alternative progressive metal kind of band who I really like. And I haven't followed him in a long time. But this guy that he started his own winery, he kind of added a new perspective to, to the wine. and and. The way they treated the wine reviewers, like that suckling guy, they kind of mocked him. And it's like, we like it. We, just because you're used to a cab in, in California or Europe or wherever, doesn't mean just because you have something new, it's bad. Um, in the same way with us, we decided to take our wines, because we, we said the wines to us, we didn't care about the subtle differences. It was like a 1% importance when you think about it. It was how we felt the next day based on 
like a decent amount of drinking. And we tried to be consistent with the drinking. Two bottles was for us. And then towards, uh, after I did a dozen episodes of this, I started thinking, man, maybe I should be a one and a half bottle guy. And like two bottles was nice and even. So I'm gonna taste this uh, Bartanura. Let's see. Ah, it smells like wine. That's a little bit of a vinegary, uh, very light, no texture. Probably a good wine for dilution, uh, summer drink. Italy. You know, we used to make fun of a friend of mine because he would drink this El Cipo Chianti, as uh, Jim Carrey would say in Dumb and Dumber. He would drink it and it was the cheapest double bottle of wine ever, but maybe he was on to something because he got the same damn buzz and passed out the exact same way. Um, but anyway, you should watch that, I think it was called Blood Into Wine is, is the documentary. It's hard to find. You could find it for free on YouTube. It has subtitles, I think Spanish or some other country. And it has really low resolution, I think 240 um, P resolution, so it's not not very uh, nice to look at, but it's a very good uh, documentary, um, and and you it, it renewed my uh, appreciation for certain winemakers, um, not not the snooty people who, who who hobnob around and and really can think they know the difference between wine, but. It did actually shed some light on, on how wine is made and, and how they, they come up with blends and they'll taste like a, like if it's a, if it's a single grape wine, they'll say, uh, well, it's missing this thing to make it like a, a better tasting wine to them. So they'll take like, you know, they'll make 70% cab and then they'll find a wine that's strong in another area. Like, let's say one wine, one grape has a, like a good forward taste, but it's missing, as they say, the, the finish. And the, but they found a wine, a, a grape that has like sort of a weak um, uh, opening taste, but it finishes extremely strong. So they'll experiment. They'll say, okay, 70% cab, and uh, and 30% will take this uh, this uh, Syrah grape. Wow, that really does balance right. I guess there's some um, what do you call it? merit to how some people like wine and the winemaker is the ultimate decision this is why I think the lead singer of Tool and his partner were were they did it their way they made a wine that they liked and whether their customers I mean they only made a couple thousand cases whether their customers like it or not is up to the customers but I guess when you make something you have to be happy with it yourself not just well, you don't have to be happy, you just want... What, what I'm trying to say is that I guess it makes the way, maker of something feel good about their product if they like it. It may not be good for business per se. If you make something, let's say you like shit and you, and, and you like nasty things and 90% of the people don't like it, but you, if you want to make those 10% of the people who have the similar taste zone as you do happy, then, then great. Um, I guess most people try to make make a, a, an accessible wine that everybody can can like. I don't know. I mean, it's like common denominator stuff. I don't know. Maybe this um, Bartonura wine is very clean. It's a 13.5 percent. I, I have to add, which is impressive for a uh, an Italian wine. They're normally in a 12. 12% uh, range, um, and for six bucks, you, you really can't go wrong. Now, speaking of economics here, um, these uh, these cases of uh, the 12 packs of the sparkling sel seltzers, they normally run. I, I pay 15 bucks um, a case, uh, which I did the math. I calculated the alcohol percentage. It's about you know give or take half a can. Every six cans of uh, the Smirnoff, for instance, 
equals about the same amount of alcohol as a bottle of wine. So a case or a 12 pack of these equals a double bottle of wine. And I've been really good. I can drink between four, sometimes I go four cans and I'm tired and I want to go to sleep. I fall asleep great. It's like a little bit of a sedative, obviously. And, you know, because if you're a regular drinker and you go a night, and let's say you drink 10 nights in a row and then that 11th night you don't feel like drinking, it's harder to fall asleep, it truly is. I think your body becomes dependent on, on the sedative uh, nature of the alcohol. And uh, that, that probably means you have a problem. Um, I, I try to treat my life like a dog. I mean, I'm going to go to sleep when I'm, or a baby. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall asleep when I'm tired. And I'm, like, and I'm going to wake up without an alarm clock when I wake up. That's how I've lived my life probably for the last uh, 15 years or so. Um, rarely do I use an alarm clock unless there's one of those rare uh, uh, moments where I have an early meeting or I have to go to jury duty or something stupid like that, which I hate. I hate having to get up early. Um, so that's it. So here, here's what we're going to do. I, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm not going to stop doing videos on Monday. These are my Monday movie pictures or Monday, um, I, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but each Monday, instead of having a uh, cheap wine reviews, there's going to be, I'm probably going to come up with three, two or three or four different categories. Um, to film. Um, there's either helpful things that we're going to try and and share with people. Like, I might make 30 second clips and maybe two minute clips. Nothing's going to go rambling on 20, 30 minutes like I've been doing with these wine, um, cheap wine reviews. Uh, it's going to be a whole lot less uh, off the cuff uh, speaking and a little bit more like specific. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, helpful things that, that might might benefit you and none of this is influenced by any other YouTubers or any other uh, people out there. Maybe, maybe not, but most likely not. And then I think I'm going to talk about some things that really bother us about the world uh, in terms of the shoddiness of, of products and, uh, and things out there that just have gone downhill noticeably in the last two, five, 10, 15, 20 years. We're going to talk about how, how things have gotten cheaper, more disposable, and, and, and show the hypocrisy, perhaps. Like, for instance, like how they make, uh, oh, we, our plastic bags are thinner, but now you can't even put like a walnut in a plastic bag, and you need to double bag it. So like, a lot of it is, is so silly, and, and no one really talks about it, how like they do things to, to, to uh, like appease like the environmentalists, yet they don't ever, the environmentalists never come back and say, why, why is this so cheap? And now we need two bags. Um, they're probably gonna start complaining about that next. Oh, two bags is too much. Uh, but so I'm, I got uh, helpful things, that little tips. I might do product reviews. I'm gonna do uh, things that we have no, uh, I have to come up with names for these channels. Uh, cheap stuff. Uh, or uh, shoddy things, and I, no one, a lot of people don't like hearing about negative, but um, if I could figure out a way to, to turn it into a positive, like you need to understand, we need to call out the things that have gone downhill over the years, because it, it the end customer, like us, or we're, the, we're the ones that are suffering as a result, and no one seems to be complaining because, uh, I guess they're, they're, they're teaching people oh, complaining is bad these days. No, complaining is good. Speaking your mind is good. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, this uh, Bartonura, 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 product of Italy. It's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, wine. Uh, like I said, I've only drank wine four times in the last five weeks. Uh, and each time was pretty much, I felt bad. So this is it, I'm not, I'm not drinking any more of this. I mean, it's nice to have the wine taste in my mouth again. There's something um, inherently satisfying about uh, my wine concoctions here. And I'm gonna make sure that the audio is on. Oh, is it on? Yeah, it's on, good. Um, 
that you don't know how many videos I lost because I just I just wasn't paying attention. This mic, this uh, boom mic I have on my 10-year-old DSLR, DSLR, is uh, there, you can't see the green light if it's on or not. It should be on in the front, but whatever. It's made in China, it's a knockoff, and it, it was like 15 bucks. So I'll take what I can get for this type of stuff. So that's it. Um, this is the final cheap wine reviews vlog for this season. I might come back if I can find clean wines. Maybe I'll just talk about clean wines that don't hurt my liver. Uh, they have sulfite free wines. I've tried a few of them. They're not good. Um, they're not enjoyable to me at least. Um, and maybe I'll just have to just go to, I'll be a one bottle guy uh, once I get, get off the uh, liver pain wagon. I'll just, uh, I'll do my uh, seltzers on, for the foreseeable future. Because um, I, I think there's something very like uh, beneficial about the way we drink them. Like I said, if I drank these like a beer, if I drank these Smirnoff things like a beer, I would suck them down like ridiculously fast. And I could easily polish a 12 pack uh, without even trying. Because 12 ounces, you one sip, two sip, you have two, three ounces left, and like you pop it. No, drinking it in a quart size uh, vat is uh, what uh, helps c curtail the, the consumption of, of alcohol, and I think it's also still enjoyable. You get like a really slow buzz. It, it's uh, it's not even the same kind of buzz as as a wine. I get a little stupefied sometimes, trippy, not trippy, but I literally trip. I destroyed our dog fence today. Uh, it was a complete accident and I had to go buy a new one. Um, anyway, that had nothing to do with drinking by the way. It was just a bad, like when this Thursday, whenever I'm filming this, it was just a weird day for a lot of people I talked to as well. But that's it. So Cheap Wine Reviews signing off for this season. We're taking a hiatus as they say. Uh, while uh, the actors film, go film major motion pictures somewhere. That's what they used to say when, when, a, when a TV series went on hiatus because they were doing other things. Whatever. I'll save this for a nice dinner. I might have another glass. This is actually pretty good. It's, uh, I don't know if like drinking seltzer and then mixing it with this uh, has anything to do with it, but it's, it's a good... It's not as floral and bouquet-y as, uh, as they make it seem. In fact, I'm gonna have another glass sack before I open up another seltzer. So maybe I haven't finished the bottle, and I'll feel like crap tomorrow. So there you go. New videos coming uh, every Monday for the foreseeable future. I'm gonna try and, and condense it to two to three to four categories. So it's not going to be like a new video next week. It's going to be, we're going to have a new video, but we're not sure what category is. I may do 10 weeks in a row of cheap stuff for a week of um, product recommendations, a week, like, I'll just go back and forth. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching for the three people that watched. Um, I ramble a lot. I don't edit. This is one take. That's how it works here. And. I hope you can follow me. Maybe my personality is uh, charming enough for, for some people to understand the power of just free thought and uh, non-scripted life, you know what I mean? Enjoy the rest of your week.